is present. Um, so yeah, um, good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to Android Study Champs. Um, I'm Kirtik from Sri Krishna College of Technology, and I'm the Android lead for SKCP in Coimbatore. And in this session, I'm teaming up with my Flutter lead, uh, Mrs. Tamil Kannan. Um, and together, we will be covering the basics of Kotlin today. And also, we will be covering the basics of um, Android development in general, and also about the mobile application industry. So without any further ado, uh, let us quickly get into the session. So yeah, um, today we will be covering uh, these topics basically. So the first one is the importance of Kotlin and why we use Kotlin today and the advantages of it. And I'll be sharing basics, um, basic syntax and uh, basics of that you need to work with Kotlin. And the third thing is, and I will also share you the Android development in Kotlin course, um, which is a course provided by Google, um, which will help to boost your career. So let, let me get, get into this today's session. So yeah, if you ask me, what is Kotlin? So Kotlin is a cross-platform statistically type general purpose programming language. So Kotlin is a modern day programming language and it has been inspired of languages that came before it. For example, Java, C++, Python. So Kotlin contains all the functions and feature, uh, which is very helpful from all these languages. So this is developed around 2010. So it is pretty new compared to other languages. So basically the creators of the language um, really tried to take the best of those languages and really put into a single language that makes it really easy for developers to use and help them to be really productive on their app development. So yeah, Kotlin is a general purpose programming language, meaning it can be used for a wide range of applications. You can use it for machine learning and development and a lot of other stuff. Yeah. So uh, the main thing of Kotlin is it supports both uh, functional programming as well as object-oriented programming paradigms, which is a huge deal um, in terms of uh, programming language. So Kotlin is statistically typed, um, which means that the type of data that you need to enter is determined at compile time um, so that it helps to uh, reduce a lot of errors that occurs in the execution. So this is a pretty helpful uh, feature in Kotlin. So uh, Kotlin is also smart, okay? Um, and it knows what type that you want to use. So it actually cuts down the amount of code that you need to write, um, making it faster to develop. So, Another, another key perk of Kotlin is it is open source and it was created by Jet, uh, JetBrains at first and then Google joined in and then they had a partnership and they now Google and JetBrains together product, promote and advance the Kotlin programming language today. And so there's a lot of investment in this language so that you, so you can learn this uh, language and be assured that you will uh, definitely get a career out of it. So yeah, all right, um, we have covered what is Kotlin. So let me just briefly give you the history of Kotlin. So yeah, um, in the screen, we have the history of Kotlin. So Kotlin was started as a project by JetBrains on 2010. Later on, on 2016, um, Kotlin 1.0 version official release was released by it by Google and uh, Google and JetBrains. And in 2017, um, Google announced that it was officially supported language for Android, uh, which is huge for Android development. Uh, and before that, you, you'll be using Java for developing Android applications. And after 2017, Kotlin was also added to the library for uh, developing native Android apps. So yeah. Um, in the recent year, 2019, at uh, Google I.O., uh, which is an, a big, huge event organized by Google every year, where they uh, release and announce their latest features, their latest line of products, and all their services together. In 2019, uh, Google announced that Android would be become Kotlin first, which means some of the features like Jetpack features and API, um, which is Android, Sorry, application programming interface 
and some of new things are to be go going to be released in Kotlin first, and then it's going to be translated to Java. So as a developer, in order to take advantage of the latest and greatest of the Android platform, you really want to start investing in Kotlin so that you can take advantage of those uh, perks that you have with Kotlin. So, and I also wanted to add that Kotlin as a language has also been improving, improving over time. Um, as I said earlier, Google has been uh, providing with a lot of funding I know to improve this language, um, to be, make it stable and uh, uh, keep it mainstream in the Android development community. So as of March uh, 2020, Kotlin 1.4 preview was released on 2020, and now we are having um, 1.5 preview of Kotlin. So yeah. So we have briefly discussed both what is Kotlin and the history of it. So let us just quickly go on into why Kotlin. So, uh, that should be a question, right? Why we need to use Kotlin? Um, you can use Java, right? So there are a lot of perks um, that comes with Kotlin. So uh, we as Android developers enjoy these a lot. So let me share you some experiences we get with Kotlin only. So the first thing is um, Kotlin is basically a very expressive language. Um, when I say expressive, it means that you can express the concepts that you want in your code with a very few lines of code. So it basically cuts down the code uh, down to its core elements. So when you compare it with Java, uh, you will be ending up with 30% less code um, when compared with Java, uh, which is a huge productivity gain for a lot of companies who's, who has, what to say, who have market in app development. So yeah. So Kotlin also tries to help you catch mistakes ahead of time. And it also prevents from even making mistakes. So how it does it, um, that is something called as null safety in Android, uh, in which a variable uh, is default, a uh, default uh, is hard to say, it's designated to value null. And at the time of execution, this null value creates an exception, um, which is a pretty big problem in Android development. So if you take the stats, um, more than 70% of Android apps gets crashes once due to null pointer exception. So Kotlin introduces a new and secure way to uh, deal with nulls. So in Kotlin, you cannot directly assign null to any variable or any sort. Uh, in Kotlin, uh, no variable by default can be set to null. So this is a huge boon for Android developers uh, who forgets to uh, provide the definition of a variable or an object. So this is the null safety provided by Kotlin. So another few, huge feature of Kotlin is that Kotlin is 100% improbable with the Java. Like Kotlin is based on Java, right? So they have built uh, based on JVM. And so um, if you have already developed uh, many Android projects in Java, you can just easily convert them into Kotlin or you can use code, uh, Kotlin code along with Java, it supports it so that you can uh, use both Kotlin and Java in your Android application. So if you already have, uh, how to say, a Java application, you can add new features and other stuff using Kotlin, um, which is a huge, uh, to be honest, and uh, it is pretty good. Uh, next is the tool compatibility. You have a lot of tools uh, for Kotlin, like other languages. You do have IntelliJ for uh, as a basic software development environment, and you also have Android Studio, um, which will be using, using for um, developing Android apps, or you also have support in Eclipse. And so on the tool side of things, uh, Kotlin is pretty stable today. So yeah, another big uh, benefit of Kotlin uh, is structured concurrency. So uh, let me explain what it is in an Android app. Uh, typically, you will have a lot of background applications, like operations uh, to be specific. Uh, like uh, network calls or uh, database operations, which you need to perform uh, for the app to be running. Um, so, and to do this in an organized way, uh, Kotlin provides uh, a thing called coroutines, which is actually um, small processors. Uh, the processes is actually smaller than the threads. So if you know threads, uh, it is a pretty small process. So even inside threads, you have coroutines in uh, Kotlin, uh, which helps you to uh, cut down a lot of error that happens to multi-threading and other stuff. 
So due to these advantages, Scotland has actually grown uh, to be the number fourth most loud language for among developers um, based on a survey which was conducted by Stack Overflow at 2019. And on the right, I have presented with you the chart of which language is um, position. We can clearly see that uh, Kotlin uh, takes number four with the overall percentage of 62.9%, which is pretty huge. So yeah, um, so once why, um, so uh, it answers the question why we use Kotlin instead of Java. So yeah, Kotlin has a lot of technical advantages to be honest. So um, with these covered, let me just quickly go into the basics of a Kotlin. So yeah. All right, so uh, we are going to dive right into some examples of what the code looks like. Uh, here's the basic function. So uh, as a tradition uh, in every language we use to do this simple program, so to print hello world. So this is the basic syntax of Kotlin. So here we have a main function. So every Kotlin program uh, requires a main function um, as entry point of execution. Uh, without your main function, Kotlin is not executed. So execution starts at main. So main is um, pretty pretty important in uh, Kotlin like C. It's uh, basically similar to C. So, and this program just simply prints hello world. This is the syntax. So yeah, let me go on to the variables in Kotlin. So yeah, in Kotlin, um, basically there are uh, Kotlin provides you two types of variables. Uh, one is a mutable one and another one is an immutable one. So the mu uh, mutable one is called var. So uh, this variable can uh, take various values and it can be changed throughout the program. So if you want your variable to be uh, to be a constant and should not be changed at any instance, so you can use val. So val uh, refers to immutable type uh, in Kotlin. So if you declare with the while keyword um, before the variable, uh, your, if you change the value afterwards, um, you will be getting an error and an exception. So yeah, uh, this, is, uh, this is the basic syntax for what to say, uh, for declaring a variable uh, in Kotlin. So the first thing is you start with the keyword um, var or val. Um, uh, sorry, according to your requirements, you can keep val for mutable and val for immutable and followed by variable name. So which will be the variable, uh, which will be the name of the variable and then colon and then the data type, uh, uh, data type which you're gonna store the value of this variable and then uh, followed by the value of the variable. So this is the basic syntax for uh, declaring variable in Kotlin. So yeah. Let us go uh, to the syntax for other stuff like a control flow and other things. So as you know, let us go to if else statement, um, which is a pretty basic control statement of every programming language. So the if else statement executes a block of code uh, if specified condition is true. So if the condition is false, it's going to execute the else, uh, else statement. So this is the basics of if else uh, statement, as you know. And this is the syntax uh, through which you declare the if else statement here. So uh, you put the basic keyword if and followed by uh, brackets and inside the brackets, uh, you provide with the condition which you need to test in order to run the code inside this block. So if this condition fails, it's gonna automatically run the code block which is present inside the else block. So this is the basic syntax for uh, if else statements in Kotlin. So let us go to the Another thing called when statement, um, if you ask what is when, uh, when is nothing, like it is the same as switch case that you use in other languages such as Java and C. So um, here in when statement, um, you can use an expression or a condition inside the brackets. Uh, it's simply like a switch statement as I said before. So if it is used as an expression, the value of the first matching brand branch comes the value of the overall expression. So let me just quickly explain. See here we have declared when keyboard and then the condition to follow. So if the condition is one, it's going to print, uh, it's going to execute this line of code. When the condition is the specified value, it's going to print this specified uh, line of code. So this is the basics of when statement. And as you can see, when compared with other languages, this is pretty simplified. In other languages, you have to 
uh, do something like case one, case two, case three. Here, the syntax is pretty uh, simple and it boils down to the condition here and then followed by an hyphen and then arrow and then the code uh, which you want to execute when this condition uh, occurs. So yeah, this is the basics of when statement in Kotlin. So let me move ahead with loops. Um, so for loops, the first loop you have is a for loop, basic for loop. So as you know, for loop is a control flow statement for specifying iteration. Um, if you want to run your code in multiple iterations, we generally use for loop. And the, the syntax for for loop in Kotlin is also pretty straightforward. You just go uh, with the keyword for, and then the condition or the range or the number of times you want to execute this uh, bunch of code. And then you go, go down with the, uh, what to say, code block. So this is the basics of for loop. And we go to the um, syntax of while loop. Uh, in Kotlin, while is also pretty sta uh, straightforward. You put down the keyword while and then the condition which, you, which it needs to check and then the code block which you want to run if the condition is true. So this is the basic syntax for uh, while. So um, another thing is let us go to do while loop. Um, the do while loop is also similar to while loop. Um, the difference is this loop uh, will execute once and then check the condition. So whereas in while loop, uh, the condition is checked first uh, before the execution of this uh, code block. But in do while, um, the code will be executed once and then only the condition will be checked. So this is the difference between do and do while. And we can see that again, um, the syntax is pretty straightforward. Uh, you can easily read it. Uh, uh, starting is do and then the block of code and then the while and the condition followed by it. So yeah, um, functions. So as I said earlier, um, Kotlin fo uh, follows both uh, function programming, uh, sorry, function oriented and object oriented programming language. So functions play a major role um, in Kotlin. So yeah, in Kotlin, uh, as of uh, other programming language, we have two uh, functions, which is basically built-in functions and uh, user-defined functions. So some of the famous built-in functions that we use a lot is uh, like print statement and other stuff. Other statements are built-in functions, uh, which is pre-baked into the Kotlin library. So we, uh, the syntax for declaring a user-defined user -defined function is also pretty straightforward in Kotlin. So simply we put uh, the keyword for defining a function in Kotlin is fe one So you go down with it and the name of the function which you need to do and then open the brackets and uh, here you will be providing with the parameters uh, aka the inputs that you want to be inside your function so here i have declared two variables uh, of type int so the basic thing is you got to uh, declare the variable name and its data type so here i have um, what to say uh, taken two integers as my parameters and inside my inside my block of code of function I just uh, declared an other variable called result and simply add those values and print this uh, print the result. So this is the basic thing I have done with this user defined function. So inside the main function, I'm just uh, defining two variables and then passing on to this uh, user defined function. And this will be simply printing me uh, the value of the function. So this is the basic of uh, functions in Kotlin. So um, this is pretty helpful in Kotlin as of other languages. So um, here we come to an end for the basic syntaxes and uh, pretty much basics of Kotlin. Um, from here, you can um, learn from other stuff. So, and I'll be um, telling uh, from here, I'll be telling how to get certified, um, Google certified uh, professional uh, if you want to pursue Android development. So, the first step uh, is to create your uh, Google developer profile. So you can do this by um, going into this website or simply searching for Google developers and then create a, a new profile of your own. So once you have done that, uh, you can simply, uh, you should make your profile as public. So uh, once you have done it, uh, your profile will be public and all your, uh, everyone with your profile can view what you have learned the badges you have earned and uh, other stuff. So 
The next stuff you want to do is go to the course called Android Basics in Kotlin, um, which is a course provided by Google. And this course is pretty, uh, pretty huge and uh, satisfactory. You can learn from the basics of Kotlin to developing a Kotlin application of your own and pushing it into Play Store. This thing, uh, course complete uh, has a, a complete syllabus to get started and going in the Android field. So yeah, this course basically contains six units and then 16 pathways. So a, ba a badge will be given to you after successful completion of each pathway. Uh, basically what you'd need to do uh, is study the pathway and at the end of a pathway, um, a respective quiz will be given to you and you need to pass this quiz in order to attain the batch. So once you complete all the pathways in the quiz, um, uh, all the 16 badges uh, will be added to your Google developer profile, um, which you can send it to your respective facilitators and uh, get them verified and they will be providing you with a certificate of completion. So this will be just a certification of completion. So if you want to be originally certified by Google uh, as a Google certified profession, you need to attend this exam called AAD certification, um, which is by the way, a paid, paid uh, certification. So what you need to do uh, is pay around $150 US dollars in order to appear on this exam. And once you have paid that, uh, there will be examination so this examination will be an eight hour examination and uh, you have to uh, complete all the questions there. And once you have passed the examination, uh, you will be receiving the original, original Google certification. Um, but the catch is this certification will be valid uh, only for three years. After three years, again, you have to write the exam. So this is how you can get um, become a certified professional Android developer from Google. So yeah. Um, as I said, uh, these will be the batches you will be getting. And this is the simple breakdown of the course that is provided by Google. Um, I have personally uh, gone through all of these. And this is uh, this stuff is gold. Um, you can use it to learn from, uh, you can uh, go from a basic developer to almost uh, average developer using this course. And uh, yeah, I really recommend this course for you to study, so yeah. So yeah, thank you. Um, um, if you have any queries, uh, you can ask me in the last, uh, sorry, in the end of this session. Uh, from now on, uh, Mr. Tamil Kanan uh, will be taking this session. So yeah, thank you. Uh, hello. Yeah, okay, uh, thank you so much, Mr. Kritik. Uh, to the participants of uh, from GDSC, uh, Bakyar Puram College of Engineering and from GDSC Sri Sairam Institute of Technology. I'll be posting the form links for the for registering for the event and getting the course links. So uh, the respective uh, college, uh, they can access the links to the respective forms. I'll be posting in the chat right now. So also before uh... Tamil Karan starts. I would like to just uh, remind all the participants that please be here to learn and not for certifications because um, you might be in your first year or your second year and you might be in that race of collecting as many certificates as you can, but that actually doesn't help in uh, the real world. Uh, the skills that you are going to learn in this session is going to help you. So certificates are actually secondary and what you learn here is primary. So I would encourage each one of you to please concentrate on the session and learn as much as you can. Thank you. I think uh, Tamil Kanan can start with this presentation. Yeah, yes, thank you. Good evening all. It's an immense pleasure to see you all in this meet. Uh, give me a minute, uh, I shall share my presentation. Uh, like Tamil Khan, a minute. Uh, sorry to yeah. interrupt you. Uh, like, yes. the, like I said before, uh, the participants from Sri Sairam Institute of Technology, you can uh, use the second link to register uh, the form, uh, like, uh, the critic informed you in the previous uh, half an hour. 
you, you have to uh, create a public developer profile and you have to share it with us. Uh, uh, just go through the full uh, registration form that we have shared uh, with you. Uh, now over to Mr. Uh, Tamil Kanan. Thank you so much, Mr. Tamil Kanan. Yeah. Okay. You can uh, take over the session. Yes. Okay. Okay. I hope the screen is visible, right? Yes, it is visible. Yeah. Um, let me resume the session with some um, things about Android applications. So I hope um, there are 100 more people are in this mail. Uh, yeah, many of the people are using your Android devices, right? So um, what is an Android application first? So now Android application is a thing, an application which is running on an Android platform, right? So um, so that is all about Android application. There are a lot of Android applications in the, in the global market. Like uh, if you open a Play Store, if you search for an application like a calculator, you can get around more than 100 of results in the, um, in the Google Play Store in, if you search for an application. So there is an, uh, a vast range of applications for a single uh, tag. So uh, that is an application, an application. So how can we develop an added application? So we use two kinds of languages like Kotlin and uh, Java. As Kritik said, uh, Kotlin is being a very useful and very simple language for developing Android applications. So Google officially prefers Kotlin for uh, developing Android applications. Do you, anyone know why the Google is preferring uh, Kotlin than Java? Well, let me say the uh, let me say the thing because um, first a, a couple of years ago, uh, Java is being the most um, used uh, preferred language for developing Android applications, and now Google is switched over to Kotlin uh, because there is a dispute between Oracle and uh, Google for using their Java API. So um, everyone know that uh, Java is being developed by Oracle, right? So Oracle is the official founder of Java. And uh, Oracle is providing some sources like API to Google for developing uh, applications for their Android platform. So Android is an application, is a platform, uh, is an operating system owned by Google, and uh, Java is a language developed and uh, owned by Oracle. So Oracle is uh, started uh, started monitoring the things uh, being used by Google for their application. So it became a dispute between those two companies, and they got uh, they went off the ca case and. Finally, Oracle won the case. So, uh, so as a result, um, Google preferred using Kotlin. So, why Google, there are a last uh, lot of languages right? uh, like Python, uh, R, and there are a lot of languages. So, why Kotlin, uh, like Google prefers Kotlin is, Kotlin is an open source language as Kritik said, and it is also licensed under Apache 2.0. So it is very easy, uh, very easy for uh, Java developers to easily switch over to Kotlin also. So that is the main reason for Google um, to adapt uh, Kotlin. So on the next, um, as I said, there are very large number of applications are available in Play, Play Store. So most of the applications are, are now being developed by uh, Kotlin. Like uh, most of the applications like Wikipedia, Reddit, and uh, EndNote, um, everything. Most of the applications we see in, uh, we use in our daily life, like Udemy, and most applications we use in our uh, daily day to day routine is being developed by Kotlin. So there is a major scope for Kotlin in Android development uh, platform also. So uh, this is a kind of launches, and everything is being developed because, uh, so this is the uh, market uh, move, like. Uh, Java in 2013, uh, Java is in the peak, and the days go on. The Java is uh, since now also there is a Java uh, Java developed applications. Though there is a Kotlin developed applications have been uh, occupying the market because it is more simple and it uh, makes the application more faster. So if you buy a new phone, if you install an application like uh, like a sharing application or a files application. If the application opens very slowly, will you will you like the application? No, right? So uh, if you, uh, there must be beautiful, the application must be beautiful and performance and more efficient. So that is being liked by every person. So as a developer uh, point of view, we need to make the application more efficient and more beautiful. So Kotlin makes the use of uh, some advanced uh, API technologies so as to make the application more efficient and uh, 
um size uh, size is the main criteria for everyone because nowadays we are playing uh, pubg and uh, free fire kind of uh, kind of games like right uh, so uh, there are the size of the applications are much larger right like 1.0 uh, some gbs and 2 gb so uh, nowadays mobile nowadays the mobile uh, storage are uh, like 64 gb or 128 gb storage available but if you are in the long term if you are using an appli- a mobile phone for a long term if you are using you cannot use large applications right the your storage will be a uh, highly occupied right so storage is a main concern and kotlin makes it uh, a pretty good for making applications lighter and much faster and much efficient so and this is a simple uh, code uh, difference for why we are preferring kotlin than java so here here is the left side you can see public class user this is a simple uh, data class uh with some simple model um user you are getting first name and last name yes just we are getting the first name and the last name for that we are writing uh, these much lines of code in java but in kotlin we have just simplified the codes like class user uh, where name as krithik said where uh, first name it's a null safety right kotlin also uses null safety and um, just two lines of code just it's a four lines of code but in java we use we are using a lot more lines of code like setter getter everything so this is the main reason and it uh, makes the code very simpler modular and functional also so this is why people prefer uh, kotlin than uh, java and uh, here comes um uh, we just uh, being uh, discussing about how how what languages are we are using for developing applications we have completed developing an application uh, completed coded uh, completed coding testing everything has been done at last we need to uh, deliver our applications right we need to package we have prepared a food we need to deliver it to some people so um there are two ways for delivering our applications uh, to people like the, the first thing is apk the most popular thing and then dot aab so uh, most of us know what is an apk is it's an android package which has been officially used since the android app, uh, platform is being uh, deployed to the people so and aab is a new technology introduced uh, specially for google uh, play store so uh, let me uh, share you what is the difference between the apk and aab which is more efficient on why google is preferring ap aab than apk so the first thing is uh, size the main thing is size so how the uh, aab is reducing the size so we can, we can say it's as very uh, the code is same we have we are developing the application in the same code um but how the apk just this application extension like packaging uh, how can we save the space so here you can see a uh, class of clans flipkart netflix and ola linkedin um these are these much applications use uh, kotlin and also they use dot aab packaging uh, technique so um by using the aab packing uh, android app bundle technique they can reduce their application size to 8 percentage and 26 percentage and 57 percentage if um to acquire your customers like if you are uh, deploying your application to play store and you need to um, attract your customer attract your users the main thing if you uh, as i said before if you search for a simple calculator application you can um, you can end up with large number of results right you can uh, at least 100 results you can see in your google play store but if uh, in the user point of view how will you choose an application like it uh, it must be smaller in size right if, uh, if you can see as application in just a 1 mb of size you can you will easily install because it won't cost you much right if you uh, if your simple calculator application has a size of 10 mb 20 mb uh you may have you may have a uh, doubt right you may stop at the thing why this simple calculator application has 20 mb of size though the calculator application is simply doing the calculation uh, operation the size uh, matters right so um so the aab so we are google is preferring using aab so how the aab is reducing the size so um you are creating an application you are distributing it to the world right if you are uh, deploying it to your play store uh, the application will be available to a wide range of uh, people wide range of people in the uh, who are who are using your google play store can see your application right so if your peop- if a person from america is using your application he uses english as his device language in france he use french in uh, jap in chinese 
uh, in China, he, they use Chinese, right? So, um, the uh, default APK contains all those language files. See, though you are you are not creating it, uh, it automatically Android Studio automatically creates all those things for you. So um, Chinese language files are not necessary for an uh, English user, right? So what AAB does is it removes unnecessary files from um, unnecessary files being used on a uh, system, right? If, uh, if you are using an uh, English uh, supported and uh, a large screen device, right? There are many various sizes of Android devices in the market. So you're using a large uh, screen size device. You don't need uh, the resources needed for a small uh, size screen size device, right? So it removes the thing. Like you can see in the picture here, you can see language C, Z, language F4. So you can, uh, you can see in the right, uh, as a dynamic delivery, you can see some uh, files are missing, right? X, uh, here, XXH DPI is a large file screen size. And uh, these are the architecture. So only the needed things. So various brands of mobile are developed, uh, creating various uh, Android devices. So as a result, uh, we can uh, sort what resources are needed for what application. So it may result in a uh, smaller in file size. So this is how an AAB is reducing your uh, size burden of applications. So, and this is uh, the thing. See, this is a Pixel 2 Excel device, which has an English as an uh, ES language and has a size, uh, like uh, we can say it as a resolution XXX HDPI and has an architecture of AR ARM64. But your application, but your Android application, uh, like your Android package contains all this ES, EN, 86 uh, x86 uh, architecture and the ARM64 architecture and everything. But this device uh, no don't need this tool, uh, this architecture and this language, right? So what uh, Google Play Store does is removes these two uh, files needed for that uh, application and it creates an another APK, optimized APK, and provides your, to your device. Um, and as a result, you can get a smallest file sized application. So as of now, AAB is only supported in Google Play Store. You cannot deploy your AAB in any other uh, distributing platforms. So next, so how can we test our application? So that's called uh, AAB and APKs. We are created, we have just created, built an, um, what it say, a package. So we, are, we need to uh, test, right? How can, how this application works on different devices? So uh, you may have an Android 11 device or Android 10 device or Android 9 Pi device. So if you need to test uh, your application in some other versions of Android, you mean you know you may need not to buy another device, right? So for uh, for reducing that thing, here comes an Android emulator, which is a simple uh, uh, like what you say, Blue Stars like application, uh, which imports your Android OS into your Windows operating system. And you may use whatever thing you need and you can test your applications uh, using this added emulator also. So, and this is a simple clip uh, why emulators are being used. So these much helpful things we can do, like uh, we can uh, simulate phone, tablets, and even uh, Android TV also, uh, and Android watch like thing. So we can resize the window, like any kind of size of uh, like mobile, you can customize whatever thing you can do with your real-time device can also be done with your uh, emulators, like uh, sound and rotating your phone, like changing it to landscape and portrait and taking camera shutters, like zooming in your device, like a uh, part of your device. So whatever basic things you can do with your uh, normal device can also be done with your uh, emulator so that without damaging your uh, real device, you can use your emulators also. So like taking screenshots of your application, this may helpful. Uh, this may be helpful in your, uh, when you post your application, when you push your application in Google Play Store, you may need some screenshots for application. So at the time you can use this screenshot options also. And if you need to test your application, you can simply drag your APK file into your uh, emulator and you can simply install it and your, you can check it, right? So this is a very simple and easy method.
like you can change your location if you are developing an app application like uh, which uses gps locations you can customizely give your uh, locations you cannot test with your real device by going to some other locations and um, test your application in a single in a uh, one place you can test everything everything what you can test with your real device can be done with your emulators and yeah next uh, um next is an alternative for uh, play store so to uh, if you you have developed your application you have tested your application at last you need to publish to publish your application to your uh, friends colleagues and everyone you know you need as a uh, user so um uh, for publishing your application in google play store you need to pay some amount right like uh, 24 dollars or some other some amount of money you need to pay so without as a beginner you are pay, you are paying for an application um, which may not which may not earn you a revenue but you may need to uh, like extend your user base so what can we do as an alternative for play store is your amazon app store so i think everyone know uh, about uh, some basic features of uh, windows 11 right so uh, microsoft has introduced windows 11 and uh, the main feature of windows 11 is android support for windows 11 in windows 11 they use amazon app store as their uh, main source of uh, applications for installing uh, android apps in your windows platform so it's a great uh, time for now if you are developing an application you can simply push your application to amazon app store and uh, make available your application to wide range of people. Uh, so as of uh, Play Store, Amazon App Store has a, has a scope of a booming into Play Store, like app distribution uh, portion. See, this is how uh, Microsoft has introduced Android support for PC. Like uh, if you go to Microsoft uh, Store, now I think now it is in beta testing uh, as of Windows 11. And if it comes to live, you can share your application to Amazon App Store and make it available to people. So it's a cost efficient way. It's a free of cost. So everyone can, uh, even a single uh, Hello World application, you can publish to your Amazon App Store, uh, which will uh, give you into, into, right? So you are also developing an application, you are publishing it to some people and uh, some people, your friends are maybe using your application. If you simply create an uh, APK or AAB, and if you are sending it with uh, if you're sending it to your friends uh, through whatsapp they won't install right the, the, the application the android voice will be asking many permissions and the people may afraid so uh, my friend has sent me and malware something they may uh, they may think of like that so if you publish your application to a play store like uh, amazon app store the people may simply click on install button your application is installed so this is a very simple thing um, make use of this android app store option and uh, see, this is uh, how the Play Store, this much of things are there, like Google Play Store, Amazon, uh, Apple App Store is not for Android. So Windows Store, Amazon App Store, um, as of 2018 um, uh, views, we have 430,000 of apps being uh, published in Amazon App Store. So uh, it might be increased in uh, 2021 and uh, it will be increasing. It is increasing, it's a booming uh, Play Store, right? So let me show you uh, before ending, let me show you a simple uh, way to, how can we build your application? Let me share the screen, give me a minute. Yeah, how the screen is visible. Uh, let me show you this simple added application. So this is a very, very simple Hello World application. It simply shows Hello World, it does nothing. Uh, this is an Android application, very simple Android application. Let me show you when it, uh, how it will be appearing in your devices. So you can see Pixel 3 device has a uh, resolution of 1080p uh, by 2160 and uh, different devices have different sizes, right? So we cannot have a, a real device like these much devices like you can see Pixel 3a, 3a XL. These much devices we cannot test uh, test all with all these devices. So that's why we are using emulators also. So so these are uh, this is a very simple application. Let me show you how can we build an how can we build an APK of this application. Just uh, simply navigate to build option. You can see build bundles are APK. The AAB is uh, shortly named as bundle. 
and you can also use generate signed bundle or apk so what is the difference between these two things is generate signed bundle means so you are publish you are publishing your application uh, in google play store how uh, how will you uniquely identify this is your own application so some people may download your application and uh, change um, without changing anything like any name any uh, icon they can simply upload it to your again reupload to their uh, play console play store right so how google prevents is this uh, generate signed apk will provide you a single uh, like simple license like code which will be um, used whenever you upload your application so that will be your unique identification so that's what we are using generate signed apk so if i press it it shows some options like we need to create an aab or apk so it shows right it shows some advantages of using aab like smaller download size on demand features and assets only modules so this is what i said uh, on demand app features is whatever things needed for your uh, specific mobile device is only provided for you as so as your download size will be highly reduced so and the next thing is uh, apk uh, it's a normal thing uh, what will you do what will be doing in our daily life so we need to provide a key store path so this is what our license like thing like copyright thing so we need to provide a simple path and a password and a, a alias name and password and years of validity how much years your application will be valid this licensing will be valid and your first name organizing unit or uh, organization everything whatever you need these are the licensing thing this will be unique for your application you need to uh, like store this uh, file safely because this is the only key to open the lock of your application so that's why this is a uh, very a very what what to say very uh, unique so at last if you press next it be creating your uh, ab for now let me simply choose normal build simply select build if you press build apk uh, it will build an apk like this see you can see an a if a app uh, hyphen debug dot apk this is a generated application uh, it, it is uh, the size of this application is about 4 mb of size uh, will you download this application because it shows simply hello world if you open this application it shows simply hello world but the size of this application is 4 mb nowadays uh, highly uh, futuristic applications are simply around 5 mb of size but the simple hello world program is 4 mb of size so if you install if you publish this apk to your uh, play store it will also uh, download of 4, 4 mb of size so um if i Uh, use app bundle it also creates a simple application so but it uses so it uses um aab dot so, sorry app hyphen debug dot aab so the size of this application is simply 3.55 mb so you can simply see the difference right so this is around uh, 3.55 mb and 4.2 mbs so this simple application has a uh, this much difference right so if you are developing an application like around uh, 200 mb of size there will be a huge difference even if you push this aab to your google play store um the users will receive only 2 or 100 kb of size so that's what their application need so google automatically optimizes it and makes use of this uh, why your application so i hope uh, this will be useful if you have any doubt you can ask me in the chat thank you thank you so much tamil kanan and uh, also kirtik i really think that the syntax uh, that was shared by kirtik was very easily learnable i mean the for loop syntax was pretty much like a mixture of c++ python and haskell so i think anyone who has done some basic programming can easily go ahead and learn kotlin and build the apps of their choice and also the presentation by tamil kanan was pretty um, insightful and we were able to see the actual working that is going on Uh, so thank you both of you and uh, the participants you can uh, ask your questions in the chat if you have any um the speakers are here to answer them also 
um, about the other two days that we have in the event. We are going to have some uh, real fun activities based on today's event. So we'll be also assessing how much uh, you all have listened to today's event because I warned in between that you all have to be very attentive to the information that is being shared. So tomorrow we'll be having some interactive activities uh, like quizzes or something. Okay, let's keep that a surprise. And uh, based on that, if you win, uh, the DSCs will be giving out swags to all of you. Uh, the, the winners, I mean, not all of you. So um, yeah, I would encourage you all to actively participate uh, tomorrow as well as day after tomorrow, because uh, today it was our chance to speak and tomorrow it will be your chance to interact. So make sure you come tomorrow as well as day after tomorrow. And yeah. uh, right now, if you have any questions, you can go ahead and ask. Yes, go ahead, sir. So, uh, Thank you, Tamil Kanan and Kritik. That was a well-structured explanation. And I think it was a good start for even the beginners. And I hope everyone learned something from this. And please, participants, actually, uh, as Ravisha told, have the same enthusiasm for the next two days also, since Android Study Jams was planned for three days. And you know the next two days are hands-on sessions. So both the sessions will be as great as today. And as she said, we'll have fun activities too. So don't miss them and please have a consistent participation. Uh, if you have doubts, please unmute and ask the speakers. Okay, I'm receiving one of the questions. Uh, if Keith... Um, uh, excuse me, you're, uh, you're muted, actually. We can't hear your question. I'm so sorry. I kept talking. Okay, I received a question from Arun. Uh, he's asking, are there any advantages of Kotlin over Python? And any of you can answer that. Um, basically, Python is easier to learn, uh, to be honest. Uh, but in Android development, uh, we generally don't use Python as much as Kotlin. So um, if you want to go down in Android development, um, you must definitely uh, will be learning Java, Kotlin, or Flutter. So if you want to build native, uh, you can go with Java or Kotlin. So if you want to build uh, cross-platform applications, uh, which can run on both Android as well as iOS, uh, you can use Flutter. So this will be the answer for this. Um, no, Python uh, mostly cannot be used for developing applications as of now. Yeah, as far as my knowledge is concerned, uh, we generally use Python for backend uh, applications, like the backend part of the applications. And we generally don't talk about Python when we are talking about Android applications or web applications. So I don't think that would be a good comparison to make. Okay, I received another message from Okay, am I only getting the private messages or are you guys not able to post it in the everyone chat? You have to go to the two button that you see. It's not like a button, like on the right side of it, you will see a drop down, and there you have to click everyone in the meeting. I guess it's a mistake that everyone is messaging me directly. So I have received another message uh, from Bala GVS. And the question is, does Scotland need a runtime for Android? Yeah, uh, can you repeat the question? I can't get the thing, right? Uh, okay, Balaji is asking. Um, okay, you can ask that to Balaji. Uh, his question is, does Kotlin need a runtime for Android? What do you mean by runtime? I mean, if you could elaborate your question, please. Uh, I think everyone can unmute, right? So it will be better if you unmute and ask your doubts. Balaji VS, can you unmute yourself and ask your question? Mm. 
another question from hazel sedona by the time biology comes up with his question what is the requirement for the hands on session uh i will be posting the required links for uh, downloading like uh, for the hands on session the participants will, will need to like install android studio in their respective devices their respective laptop so i'll be posting the links on uh, how to install uh, android studio as well as the course link on uh, uh, android uh, developer.android.com so the participants can now refer to the chat and you can see like how to install uh, android studio on windows or linux or mac os whichever os you are having so we have posted all the three links uh, it will be better like uh, if you uh, refer to the video which os which you are going to work on so the basic requirement for tomorrow and day after session will be to have android studio that's it also it's one of my questions uh, this question was coming to me uh, several times is there any alternative for android studio like can we use visual studio code or some other editor that this can be answered by the speakers maybe um uh, yes uh, you can use uh, uh, visual studio code uh, to develop android application um, since android studio um, is officially supported for android development and also have some nifty features uh, under its belt of use android studio um, but if you want to use uh, microsoft visual studio code uh, it's perfectly fine and you can actually use it for developing android applications Okay, great. And uh, what do you use for emulator when you use Visual Studio Code? Um, um, based on my knowledge, I think there is an uh, emulator available for uh, Microsoft Visual Studio Code. Um, I think you have to install the plugin for it. Uh, I'm not pretty sure. Um, I will just Google it up and you now say. Okay, I'm not sure about Kotlin, but when I was working with Flutter, um, we used an online emulator. like one of the participants one of the team members of mine used online emulator and the other one was using uh, the own the, the android phones that we have as an emulator so just in case android studio is heavy on your laptops maybe you can consider installing visual studio code any more questions uh, and participants from shri saram engineering college i hope uh the coordinator has put the links uh, form link for our registering so i guess you can refer uh, to the link uh this link uh, for uh, to the all the participants from shri sairam engineering college as pre, uh, as uh, like i said before i i will also post the links for the respective other uh, gdscs uh from uh, bakhtiarpuram college of engineering and shri sairam institute of technology uh you can register in this respective links for, for your respective colleges and i guess you can join the whatsapp group uh and start working on it uh are there any more uh, doubts coming Rabi okay i'm receiving or... one from <laughs> balaji <laughs> okay balaji you can just go ahead and unmute yourself if you want I'll recite your question, but it's better if you unmute yourself. So, okay, let me recite. Uh, okay, Balaji is saying that he is using PC, so he can't. um i guess that's not a problem but it's okay um balaji's question is um swift versus kotlin for apple ecosystem which is more efficient and effective um i think uh, generally kotlin is not used for ios um swift and uh, flutter is used um for ios development i think so so yeah okay thank you
Uh, so are there any more queries? Robin, uh, maybe you can network with people in your own DSC. Uh, you must be having some Discord channel or Telegram channel. Uh, go ahead and network with people and maybe you can find uh, your teammates. Um, okay, Sanjeev is asking some information on Flutter. What is it exactly? Um, I hope uh, this question will be answered by uh, Tamil Kanan, who is our Flutter lead. So, yeah, Tamil Kanan. Yeah, yes. Uh, Flutter is a uh, cross platform um, developing language. So, it's a framework. It's a simply a framework developed by Google, which is officially owned by Google. So, by using Flutter, you can create applications for Android, um, iOS, Windows, Mac and Linux and even embedded systems also, and even for web. So that's uh, that is a, uh, that's Flutter. It's a framework. We use Dart as a programming language for Flutter. Um, uh, Android Studio is an IDE, right? So we use uh, IDE for developing uh, languages. It's a playground where we, we can play any kind of games, right? So that is the thing. Um, so Android Studio is, uh, we can develop a Flutter in Android Studio also. Uh, Robin, I just said that if you want to network with other developers to help you build some Android projects, maybe you can uh, talk to people in your own Discord or Telegram channel that you have for your DSC. I guess if we don't have any more questions, we can um, wrap up the session. Okay, the participants like... Uh... Can, the participants and the coordinators, can you like turn on your video so like we can have a screenshot? This will be going on the walls of all our uh, uh, GDAC communities. Uh, yeah, we highly encourage the participants also to turn on your cameras if you can. It's just for a screenshot. Uh, there's another question from Dhanlakshmi. Participants, leads, and coordinators, all the coordinators, can you like turn on the videos? Uh, okay, I see this. Wait, let me just uh, check it. Wait. Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry. For the issue. I'll just check. Um, can you check now, participants? Can you check if you can turn on the videos now? Yeah, okay. Akash, Sanjeev. And really great to see bright faces in this evening. What is the syntax for printing statements in Kotlin? Uh, Kritik, can you answer that in the chat? Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, okay. They are asking for like the syntax. I hope you guys had fun 
uh, learned new things about Kotlin and Android. Uh, can I get a reply in the chat? Did you learn uh, new things about Kotlin? Does anyone know more about Kotlin? Uh, like, have you worked on Kotlin before? And how many of you are already starting with developing apps for this campaign? Another question from Robin, uh, which is the best language to code an AI-based image recognition app? Uh, uh, thank you participants like we have taken the screenshot i guess you can turn off the videos now so to answer that uh, best ai recognition app so mostly web app will be the best one to uh, host it because uh, you can either web app, you can convert it to a mobile application as well as you can uh, uh, base it as a web website. So for uh, best, I guess Python will be recently, Python uh, is being the best language for coding and learning uh, regarding to AI. So Python as backend, like Ravisha said, uh, will be the perfect one. Thank you, Avinash. Thank you. Okay, uh, to uh, to Avinash, uh, Kritik has posted the uh, syntax, so you can just, if you want, you can just go through that. Um, is there anyone else having any doubts about uh, the uh, session today? Um, also, please make sure you are updated with uh, your own DSC uh, social media platforms and stuff so that you uh, can sign up for tomorrow's and day after tomorrow's event as well. Yeah, we will be also uh, we'll be posting the recording of the session so you can access it whenever you want after we publish it on YouTube or something. So. We'll be posting all the videos together in a single. Uh, ASJ community channel, so you can, so I guess you'll be able to access it soon. Yeah. So, yeah, okay, cool. I guess that's it. Uh, if anyone else having any doubt, channel link. Avinash, which college are you from? Param Institute or Engineering College? Okay, so if you're in the WhatsApp group, uh, you'll get the notification there about the tomorrow's hands on session. Uh, session. Uh, also in the Telegram groups. So stay tuned in the groups. Uh, if not, uh, just ping me your email. Uh, I'll just mail the invite links to your mail. Yeah, okay. So anyone else? I guess anyone who has joined the DSC chapters on the Google DSC platform, uh, you will anyways be receiving emails as soon as uh, the event is closer. Like when there is 60, six hours to go to the event, you'll already be receiving a mail from the platform itself. Uh, uh, you'll be receiving the mail. So ensure that you have removed the mail from GDSC uh, from the spam because it usually goes to the spam. Ensure you have unchecked, uh, like uh, make sure it's in your, it comes to your main inbox and just remove it from the spam. Because uh, we will be, all the GDSEs will be hosting new sessions every single month. So ensure uh, the GDSE mail, the G GDSE automated mail, not in your spam box. Can we share our LinkedIn profile just? Yeah, sure, Robin. Uh, if you want, we can just. Can you publish the video once the session is over so people don't miss? Uh, sure, Vasha. Uh, you'll just. I'll just make sure. Uh, I post it by tonight. 
uh, we will share the links in your respective uh, TDSE groups, uh, the channels. So, sure. Any other queries to the participants who joined late? Like, if you want to catch up, we will post the PPTs and the regarding uh, links uh, soon. Thank you so much, Suman Prakash. Thank you so much. Otherwise... By the way, Suman Prakash Keshri is my tech lead. Oh, cool. Like he didn't, uh, we, uh, we didn't know that. So. Yeah.